Hello, welcome back to my bench. Today's video is not about anything in electronics. This is actually a Arduino project. A few months ago I was asked to see if I could come up with a articulated octopus tentacle. And I thought about it for quite a while. I had a little stumbling blocks. First of all, I wasn't that great at programming Arduino, so I had to learn that language. And I didn't really know what was available, so there were several trips up to the local micro center to see what was there. And finally, I came up with uh, some ideas. The first thing is, I printed this box that you see here. And the box, actually, I'll never print another box like this. It took hours and hours and hours. And I kind of goofed up on the top of the box because there's no way to attach it. <laughs> so, but on the final product of this thing, this is, this is just a um, prototype. But on the final product of this thing, if it actually does happen, I'm going to buy the boxes for it. I'm not going to print them. That's ridiculous. But, uh, so, we'll take a look at what's in here. First thing you see is there is a uh, Arduino here down in the bottom. It's a Uno. Uh, a real Uno. Uh, I found out early on that playing with those fake Unos is kind of difficult. For one thing, they won't maintain the... The, the port the number that it goes out to so every time you want to write something out to it you have to change the port number which gets to be irritating so I used a real Arduino Uno uh, and there then on the top of the box mounted on the lid is the controller for the uh, stepper motor and the stepper motor is mounted on there too as you can see now this is just a little cheap stepper motor uh, I think they're like 1250 or something like that so it, it's you know it too is not going to be the eventual uh, device used in this uh, I'm gonna put a much stronger and more robust uh, stepper motor in it if we do this of course I'll need eight of these things because it's an octopus so uh, I don't think I'm gonna print all the parts either because it just takes way too long I think I'll have somebody actually uh, mold the parts for me. So anyway, th that's the box, basically. And one of the problems right now is the box has no ventilation at all. So running after running for a half an hour, that motor gets really hot. As far as on the top of the box, we've got a pulley that I made. If you look at it closely enough, you can see that the pulley is actually a dual pulley. Originally... Uh, I was going to have the uh, pull wires run down both sides of the uh, tentacle um, vertebrae so that it would pull from one side and then pull from the other side. And that didn't really work. A lot of it had to do with what I had available for pull wires. Uh, initially, I started off with um, uh, wire wrap wire. Uh, which kind of worked, but I couldn't see it as lasting very long. Also, it didn't have enough rigidity to go back to the f straight position for the tentacle. It always ended up with a little bit of a curve someplace in it. I went through a lot of the tentacle vertebrae. As you can see here, what I finally ended up with is basically a ball on a little platform with four holes in it. And the four holes initially were designed so that <clears throat> the wire could go down one set of holes, loop around the end, and come back another set of holes, uh, and be tied off. And then the pulley would pull on the one set of holes, and it would wrap the, the, the tentacle up. Well, <clears throat> it works when you do it one direction, but I wanted it to go both directions, but it didn't, didn't really work very well because... Yes, it was unspooling the wire off of the pulley back into the vertebrae, but there was too much resistance of the wire. It wouldn't go back down, and there wasn't enough weight to pull it through. And Anyway, that, it, it just didn't work. So I, just, I settled. I said, okay, well, we'll just do it one direction. 
uh, which which works because once they get to swave in about there, they you can't really tell which direction it's going anyway too much. And there's going to be eight of them, so I can make them go different directions anyway. Um, initially, also, the vertebrae did not have a hole down the center. Uh, I didn't really think about that, but you really need the hole going down the center to run a wire through uh, to maintain the straightness of it. That also kind of limits the ability to curl it up, but I think maybe the it's good enough the way it is. As for wires, I went through a lot of things, and I eventually came up with a 30-pound fishing leader line, steel fishing leader line that's wrapped in uh, plastic. It's pretty rugged stuff, and I don't think it's going to break, and it provides enough rigidity with the piece, uh, with the wire going down through the center that the tentacle will straighten out uh, when it runs. Uh, but that that took quite a few different tries to come up with it. Uh, a couple of the pieces that are used are leftovers from other tries, like that thing sticking out the back that the wires go through. That was from another try, but it serves its purpose. It's, it hangs it off, and it'll let it go poke through the shell of the octopus so that the, the, the body of the octopus, so that the tentacles hang out and you don't really see anything. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, the program actually isn't much of a program. I'll, I'll show it to you here. It's, you just, I just have the random, uh, random number generators set up for the number of turns or the number of steps that the motor will go. This particular motor has 200 steps per revolution. And I set it at about 250, and that 250 is about as far as this tentacle will twist before it gets too tight, and the motor just stalls. And when the motor stalls, then it gets out of sync. Uh, there's a couple of one of the things I have to work on <clears throat> is getting this motor to sync up to a specific position uh, when you start it up, so the tentacle is straight. But I'll I'll work on that later. Uh, I also randomized the speed at which the uh, the the tentacle moves, uh, so that it's not always going at the same speed, curling up or going down. So it just random uh, between 50 and 80, I believe, or something like that. Well, you know, between 50 and 80, and it, it it's enough of a difference that it'll it'll kind of flick sometimes and then go up slowly or go down fast or whatever so that it looks like more natural. Then I also randomized the time between actions so that it doesn't always go wait between going up or going down the same amount of time and it gives it a little bit more of a a realistic look to it. Uh, so it's really not hard programming in any way, shape, or form. Uh, interesting little language. <clears throat> and then uh, the whole thing runs off of 12 volts because the little uh, controller for the motor that I'm using uh, has 5 volts output through a voltage regulator to drive the Arduino, so I don't need a separate power supply for the Arduino. That's kind of neat. Uh, it, it kind of makes programming a little weird because it tries to run when you stick the, the programming uh, USB connector in there. It kind of hums a little bit and runs, but you know, okay, that's not going to hurt it, I guess. Uh, but when I plug it into the 12-volt source, it will automatically start up and go. Eventually, what I want to do with it is I want to put a... Um, motion sensor on it on the box here or on the front of the somewhere on the octopus body so that it doesn't actually do anything until somebody comes into the room where it's at and then I want a proximity sensor sticking out the octopus 
<clears throat> so that when <clears throat> when they first come into the room, the octopus will start and it'll kind of do some slow stuff. Uh, and then when they get into the room and get closer to it uh, or reach up for it, then it become uh, more active and frantic and and move a little faster. So it's you know that's going to be some more programming, but that that's pretty pretty easy programming. So I've got these little these little sensors that are going to be sticking out of the uh, octopus body. Um, it's I did the whole thing seems to work. It's got it needs it needs a little bit of um, uh, you know testing more testing and a little bit more programming. But I'm fairly happy with it. So here you go. Here's a little video of it working oh by the way the covering for the octopus tentacle was uh made by my girlfriend linda she um uh, had an old uh, bathing suit that was no longer any good so she cut off a piece of the bathing suit which is that that uh sort of stretchy bathing bathing suit material and curved it around and made a little sack that i could put over all of the all of the uh, pieces and uh, so I've got a sort of three-colored blue and black octopus tentacle, but it, it gets the point across. I'm going to leave the actual artistry of the octopus tentacle up to up to the artists in the group that are doing this project. So here's a video of it in action. And uh, I, I took the sound away because it's really loud in here. I had my ham radio on and it was making all kinds of noise. But uh, I'll put a little little audio under it. So... Here's the first attempt, and I'll keep you informed on uh, on how it works with the other sensors and things. Thanks for watching.